Right now, she's Oprah. What happens if she goes back to being in politics? I don't think she'd like it. That's what we're telling you, it. Michelle, okay? That's what we're trying to tell you. You would hate that job. Don't Martha's do Vinia. it. Go to Please. Martha's Vineyard. Throw super spreader parties. Your life is <laughs> awesome. Don't leave it. Don't even think about leaving it. Yeah. Don't listen to Barack. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Okay, listen to me. Yeah, right. so I'm just listening to for Barack. Welcome to Sarah Gonzalez Unfiltered. Uh, got a lot for you today, and uh, we're going to get into that. But I want to uh, thank our sponsor, Cardio Miracle, which I am drinking in my I'm a convicted felon. I'm voting for the convicted felon. I'm not a convicted felon yet uh, mug. I am actually drinking it. It was either that or tequila today. And the angel on my shoulder won out. So if you guys have not yet tried Cardio Miracle, I drink it. Um, I try to drink it every single day. It gives me, I would say, a lot uh, more energy, um, but it's good for all sorts of things. It's good for heart issues. It's good for um, dementia. Joe, we're going to get you some Cardio Miracle. It's on the way to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. But uh, go to CardioMiracle.com slash Sarah. Use code Sarah for 10% off your first order or subscribe and save 15% off with free shipping. That's CardioMiracle.com slash Sarah. Use code Sarah. So in case you missed yesterday's show, I want to play for you some footage from the pro Hamas riot. And I want, I want you to know I'm choosing my words very carefully here. The pro-Hamas riot, not protest, riot in Washington, D.C. with, uh, you know, of course, at the same time that Benjamin Netanyahu was speaking to Congress. Watch. Those of you who are listening on the audio podcast, I mean, they're just legitimately pushing and shoving police officers. Riot police have them on the ground, and someone grabs the police officer and removes him. Just like picks him up and throws him across the ground. Try to take the American flag that was burning. This is unbelievable. Um, by the way, U.S. Park Police released a statement earlier today that was like, um, "Well, there were very few arrests made, mostly because we didn't have the manpower to uh, to handle this." Well, you know what? Good thing you guys apparently can track down every single person who was in D.C. yesterday. I have been reliably informed since January 6, 2021, that you guys are able to track down anyone who was even remotely close to that area. So I do hope that you do that now. Because it is like impossible to argue some sort of a, a silver lining here. These people are they're ruining our country. They're desecrating our flag. Our monuments. And I, I mean, it's not even like that they're burning our flag. They're burning our flag while they are raising a Palestinian flag. Like, think about that. You like that country so much, go there. Just go there. I will pay a one way ticket for you to leave and go there. And then you can get very familiar with that flag. By the way, God help you if you're gay or trans and you go there. So it's obvious that this is like, this is just all bad. Like these are the scum of the earth. And I'm not here to try to like sell you on some optimistic point of view of what's going on. Well, maybe I am. Okay. Because Kamala Harris, of course, not only vice president, but the presumed Democrat nominee, Kamala Harris is now having to pay the price for it. Okay. Um, I want to talk about the, uh, the reasons. Look. We already know Kamala is going to fail, but let's go into some specifics here, okay? Number one, she condemned pro-Palestinian rioters burning the flags, defacing these statues, uh, rioting on in Union Park and on Capitol Hill. She had to release this big, long statement. I'm going to read, read to you some of it. And I want you to, as you're listening to this, think about whether or not she actually feels this way. Because I think that she's just, she feels backed into a corner. She feels like she's forced to take a much stronger stance against all of these people than I think she ever wanted to or that she actually truly feels. And you just have to wonder, 
She probably has a lot of Hamas lovers in her base. Is this going to alienate them? Okay, here was part of her statement. Yesterday at Union Station in Washington, D.C., we saw despicable acts by unpatriotic protesters and dangerous hate-fueled rhetoric. I condemn any individuals associating with the brutal terrorist organization Hamas, which has vowed to annihilate the state of Israel and kill Jews. Pro-Hamas graffiti and rhetoric is abhorrent, and we must not tolerate it in our nation. That's not going to play well with her base. That's not going to play well with the people who were already uh, very, you know, I would say disillusioned who were Democrats, but disillusioned in voting for Joe because they didn't think that Joe was taking a strong enough stance against Israel. And now their girl, their girl Kamala is coming out and she's like, I condemn you. I think you're unpatriotic. I think these are despicable acts. I don't think that's going to fly with them. On top of that, her very own side, her people, what do you mean you people? Yeah, I said it, you people. Her people think that she is a failed border czar. They're admitting to it. I know the press is trying to wipe away the fact that Joe ever crowned her as border czar. They're like, that's not, let fact check, not true. She was never really the border czar. I mean, I kind of agree with them there. Uh, she never really was the border czar because she never really actually went to the border. She never really did anything about it. So yeah, I guess maybe she was never really the border czar, but she very much was the border czar. And so today, six Democrats joined every Republican House member to condemn Kamala Harris's handling of the border crisis. That's crazy. It passed 220 to 196 with the following Democrat representatives turning on Kamala Harris. Jared Golden of Maine, uh, Marie Glusenkamp, Perez, Washington, Mary Petola, Alaska, even in Alaska, even in Alaska, they're like, this border crisis is wrong. You think they have to deal with the border crisis in Alaska? No. And they're still voting against her. Henry Cuellar of Texas, Don Davis of North Carolina, and uh, Yadira Caraveo in uh, Colorado. Her own people are turning against her because they cannot deny that the border has been just decimated under her and Biden's watch. That, I mean, that's, that is, they always, you can always trust the Democrats to stick together in lockstep. It's usually the Republicans who are like, well, I don't want to betray my morals. And now you've got six Democrats. This is their nominee. And this is the time that they choose to actually publicly condemn her handling on the border. That's not a small thing, all right? Now, I want to get to number three, which is one of my favorites. Um, I don't know how much you guys know about her stepdaughter. She's like a freak. I don't know if we've got, oh, God, bleh, that picture on the, mm -mm, no. I don't know if we've got a, another Hunter Biden in the works, maybe, but this girl is weird, okay? 25-year-old Ella Emhoff, uh, very heavily tattooed, which is fine. I don't, I'm not judging. Um, but uh, she is, of course, the daughter of Kamala's husband. Kamala has no children. Uh, she is a transgender rights advocate, this 25-year-old. Um, you can, those of you who are watching can see, she doesn't like to shave her armpits and she really likes to show everyone that she doesn't shave her armpits. Those of you who are listening on audio podcast, be grateful that you're listening on audio today. And uh, on November 4th, just weeks after Hamas's murderous invasion of Israel, she actually shared a fundraising link for the Palestine Children's Relief Fund in the bio of her Instagram account. So she is, I mean, we know which side she's on in this particular conflict. And um, apparently she also like reposted this weird message from a UK pop star Charlie XCX to her Instagram followers that was like, this is what the kids are saying these days. Kamala is brat. Someone could let me know in the comments what that means. I would very much appreciate that. Yes, I've reached that age. Apparently, I'm told that it's like a very, very big compliment by Gen Z. But this is, I mean, she's, Kamala is like, she's just such a terrible candidate. Um, and she, I love that all of these things that are happening right now that she is being forced to attend to, she's being forced to come out and condemn her people, all of these pro-Hamas terrorists, what I'm calling them, 
And I, I just love it just couldn't be happening to a more deserving person. So, yes, we know that she's going to fall on her face. But, uh, you know, it's just nice to see all of these things come to fruition. Now, when we come back, um, I want to uh, I want to get the guest take on this. And then I want to talk about we're talking about Kamala as the nominee. But I do want to talk about could there potentially be someone else trying to uh, trying to, I don't know, maybe raise some sort of a bid against Kamala within her own party. We will get into that with the panel when we return. All right. I want to welcome the panel today. Yaku Buyans, Police TV contributor and host of The Bottom Line, along with this is his first time on the show. Kenny Webster. He is the co-host of the W and J show over there in Houston, yeah. Texas, not too far from here. That's right. And you're in town. You are going to be you were with Alex Stein. That's right. His show you back survived. tonight as well. It's so much are you cleaner okay? in here. Yeah. OK. You don't have like PTSD from they, they told me not to touch the ground because I could cut myself. So people in the audience are going to laugh and think that that was a joke. Not a joke. <laughs> not a joke. <laughs> not Which is not far from me. It's about 150 feet that way is danger zone. It really is. It's about 20 feet over there, and yet it's 1,000 miles away <laughs> from this beautiful <laughs> place called the Sarah Gonzalez world. Yeah, Kenny, Kenny walked on, and he was like, oh, we have a, a table with coasters. mugs and coasters, and wow, this is nice. <laughs> no stains on the carpeting? No. That's remarkable. How did you do it? Well, I just told everyone that they'd be fired if they spilled anything on the carpet. Smart. Yeah. yeah. Mission accomplished. <laughs> yeah. So, um, okay. So I want to, you know, I, I just talked about Kamala yeah. and how she's kind of being backed into a corner by her own party because they are, you know, uh, destroying important government property, historical, you know, monuments and doing it in the name of not the Palestinians, but Hamas. So like she has to come out with this statement. It's going to piss them off. We know all of that. But then as that's going on, um, let's talk about Gavin Newsom. So mm -hmm. do you guys remember back in November? This was November 2023. And Gavin Newsom uh, cited it was time to clean up the uh, literal shithole of uh, San Francisco, and, and he said this, watch. I know folks say, oh, they're just cleaning up this place because all those fancy leaders are coming into town. Um, <laughs> that's <Yes>. true, <laughs> yeah. yes. because it's true. Yes, yes, it is true. And then he allowed it to just go right back into a shithole. And so now, curiously, this morning, uh, we read that Gavin Newsom has issued an executive order for the removal of homeless encampments in California. Now, of course, no, Xi Jinping isn't coming to visit this time, um, but uh, his executive order comes after a SCOTUS ruling from late June that allows cities to actually enforce bans on sleeping outdoors in public spaces. Uh, it's just very curious that all of a sudden, before the convention, before the election. That's right. All of these things start, oh, Gavin Newsom can actually do something to clean up the streets of San Francisco and Los Angeles and every single other, uh, you know, city in California. Skid Row. Curious timing. Yeah, it's not the SCOTUS ruling. No, oh. it's, the, it's the vying for the position for the office of president. Right. You've got this faux primary going on, right? And it's all smoke and mirrors. It's all a facade. Kamala's running for the office and Gavin is featuring and you're going to see Buttigieg will show his neck soon. You'll see. Buttigieg will show and they'll all, the Motley crew will come back because they're vying for position. All smoke and mirrors. I firmly believe it's already decided. Nothing can happen until convention legally legally mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. you watch and see two black chicks go at it huh. and the one that win may or may not be a chick i don't know <laughs> i don't know well, well michelle that. obama wins this race michelle obama i believe it's michelle obama and that's a problem it's a problem when i saw barack obama two weeks ago on an ad where he said just give five dollars Five dollars to secure democracy. Five dollars, uh, Black America. So like they, said, like they have any room to talk about it, democracy exactly. with what they're doing. But he didn't do that for Joe Biden for four years. Why now? Because he, because he wants the White House back, and he's been running the White House with Susan Rice, I believe. But they want to occupy, you know, move the furniture. Michelle <laughs> be the front, and you know, 
I'm yeah. telling you, watch Obama's. Uh, that it's not gonna be. I mean, look at it is tackling Kamala. It is. I mean, to his point, it is very curious to me that Obama seems to be the only holdout within you know all of these. You know, the Clintons already endorsed Kamala. Um, everyone seems to be endorsing Kamala except because they Obama. hate. But they hate Michelle Obama and Hillary. Don't get along. No. Kamala and Hillary don't get along. I'm telling you this. Don't pay attention to any of them. Pay attention to Jeremiah Wright and Louis Farrakhan. <laughs> well, Those I'm, guys I'm, run Chicago. They built Barack Obama. They were his mentors. Desi Jackson, those are the people that run that city. I'm just telling you, you see the cockroaches are coming. I'm from Chicago, and I could tell you, you know, to your point, I, I think you make a lot of great points there. The Jacksons and the Louis Farrakhans, they actually don't like the Obamas that much because for a long time, oh, Louis Farrakhan, Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, these guys were insurance policies to big yeah. corporations. If, if you were accused of racism, you oh, could yeah. get Al Sharpton on your board. Jesse you could Jackson. get Jesse Jackson at your corporation. Sure. How could we be a racist? <laughs> we pay Jesse Jackson a million dollars a year. So there's always been a tension there. Coca-Cola, all None these of these guys. guys really like each other at the yeah. end of the day. Sorry, that's a reminder. I have to go to the gym normally. Sorry. <laughs> my apologies. Well, I do have a rule. You're lucky. It wasn't a phone call. Take no. it. Yeah, I have a rule that if you get if you get a call in the middle of the show and it rings, you have to answer it. No, it's I are, I put it on silent. I lift. I lift is a thing about me. And oh, my day, God. You can always trust the lifter to tell you that he lifts. It's okay, or, or CrossFit or vegans. <laughs> yes. but going back to the thing about Newsom for a minute, isn't it amazing what it takes for him to clean up California. Yeah. Yes. You, you remember before, dictator of China comes to town. Yeah. Get all the hobos off the streets. Get all the feces, all the mm. hypodermic needles. The irony of this, the bitter irony, where do you think the fentanyl came from? Right. The fentanyl came from China, yeah. who sold it to the cartels, who brought it to America. We're cleaning up a mess they created to impress them. Mm -hmm. Fast forward several months now, or now where are we at? Gavin Newsom has supposedly had the shadow campaign. Have you heard about this? He's got yep. a team of people, yep. and I don't find that hard to believe in case he could be president. But you know, it's amazing, because if it is him, it's gotta, it's gotta be easy to beat either one of them. They're both from California, number one for homelessness, highest rate of poverty in the country. Where are people fleeing in droves right now to come here to Texas? California. Nobody wants to live in California. Yeah. If California is so great, why is everybody leaving? Kamala right. couldn't get two percent vote in, in in her primary when she ran against against Joe Biden. Look, this is a this is a sh look. If you were them, I always say this. If you were them, the left, the crazies, the radicals, mm -hmm. the the completely, you know, indoctrinated. Who would you truly go with? I mean. Do you really? Maybe they think because they had a a, 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 a man that was non composmentos He was not there, right? He's not there. Run the White House and, hey, Kamala's a little bit better than that, maybe. I don't think so. I think they're going to go for a, uh, a jugular here with the Obamas. I just have that gut feel, and we better be ready. You know what else ready. Obama probably doesn't like about Kamala? Have you ever heard this talking point? She's the female Obama. She's the female. O now, if you're Barack yeah, yeah. and you watch her on TV giggling about yeah. the wheels on the bus go, like, the <laughs> I drove, space. I drove a school bus. <laughs> would you yeah. want that? Would you want her to be the female Basics. you? No. 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 Yeah, Look. That's a great point. Look, it's easier for Trump against Kamala. No question. Mm -hmm. Sure. There's, there's no mm -hmm. doubt. Debating Kamala is a lot easier. Um... Michelle is dangerous because it's not even about Michelle. It's Barack on the campaign trail, full-fledged, that's super dangerous. I just still don't I think, think that Michelle wants it, though. I don't think so either. I don't think she wants it. She's, but she has a cush life, right? Yeah. Like this yeah. ritzy lifestyle on Martha's Vineyard. Yeah. And Why Barack has been running to? the White House. From They're already anyway. running it anyway. anyway. Right. Why do I have Look, to I'll be happy if it's too. Kamala and it's not. Look, yeah. Newsom is also easy to defeat. Do you think... Let's, no, okay, hold on. Let's he, talk about that. I think he's that. tougher than Kamala, 100%. Yeah, I do, too. No I do, too. And, and, and here's but he the, survived a recall. Yes. By hook or crook, but he survived right. a recall in California. But, but, but here's the thing that is so frustrating to me is that um, clearly, I mean, you just mentioned, it's like, I mean, California is awful. Terrible. It's awful. It is awful. And yet, I don't know that, like, people across the country understand that. No. 
um, if they haven't been there or if they don't pay attention to this like we do for a living. And so I do believe in Gavin Newsom's ability to lie to people. I think he's now, look, very, he's very slick. good. Right. He's very he's good. He's more like Barack than Kamala. He is. He is slick. He's a he great is, orator. He's right. Great. He's, yeah. he's no, handsome. He's, he's like in shape, you know, and it's yeah. just like, I mean, it's just have you he's se- a snake. Have you seen a list of all the candidates they were considering and their favorability? It's like the Michigan governor, yeah. the mm-hmm. Arizona. What is it? Mark Kelly. Mark, the, the, yeah. 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 Uh, and, at the top of the list is Shapiro, the Pennsylvania governor. Yes. Now, I'm sure you guys have heard this. Which Kamala apparently is going to tap for, well, that's well, not they, the right well, word, maybe. For Kamala, right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, they, they claim that she's going to select, nominate as VP, apparently. Well, apparently they can't. Have you heard yes. this? No, why? Because she's, cause he's a Jew. And so they they admitted this on CNN earlier this week. Well, we can't pick a Jew. Yeah. Like they're saying. Oh the my gosh. Shapiro. He's a Shapiro. He's a Jew. Right. And with Israel going on, I, t- today Kamala was the in my irony. city. The irony. I'm, I'm from <laughs> Houston. Today Kamala was in my city, and yeah. so the, the that why you're here. I would. Le- I would. Have <laughs> you left. left. Yeah, I wanted to. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Thank you. For sure. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> well, okay. So people don't realize this, but the grassroots really hate Kamala. Oh so yeah. One of my listeners sent me a link today. To the protest flyer they put up. She's Killer Kamala. Now, Ant- already? Antifa's not as good at nicknames as Trump is. BLM's yeah. coming against her. Did you see that? Yeah. BLM. Yeah. And, and, and mind you, you'll never be woke enough for the rage mob. That's the group of people that she bailed out in 2020. Right. Yeah. This, this law and order, root and tootin prosecutor let all the rioters out of jail. Mm-hmm. She's an open border authoritarian from a state that's failing right now. And when you don't have any principles, you can say you believe in anything at the drop of a dime. Right. That's why 10, 20, back in 2010, she was sort of a, a, a conservative Democrat who locked up uh, sex workers and deported illegal immigrants and put potheads in jail. And then years later, she's on the radio with Charlemagne the God, giggling about how she sm- Remember, smokes a stogie on the side. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. And never mind the fact that she said she was listening to Tupac in the '80s. But we're now we're getting off topic. Right. Here. He didn't even have an album yeah, out. The at timing the time. did not align. She's clearly a liar. Right. And I gotta think people, young black voters, that that stuff resonates with them. They might not understand Iran. Yeah. They might not understand the social security system and why the bubble's gonna burst. But they get that. That they understand a poser. Well, she's and, a liar. But that's why she's the easier one to beat. Newsom is harder to beat. No question. Yeah, I, I really do think that. Michelle is the hardest. Now, what does that say for the average American voter? I mean, nothing good. That, no. They, no. that, they, that they could be no. shown proof yes. right in front of them of no. what he has turned California into and still want to vote for him because, like, oh, he look nice and he speak well. Like, I, I just think it doesn't speak anything good about us um, as a country. But, right. yeah, I, I agree with you. I do, I do think he would be hard to beat. People yeah. are so... I mean, we're in a bubble because we're we're on Twitter and we're in the media and your audience. I mean, even they're in a bubble because they're well-educated. They understand what's going on. I live in Houston where Dan Crenshaw is so unpopular with the grassroots. He's unpopular with the conservative media. He's unpopular with the local delegates. And yet somehow 70% 70 of the vote in the primary. But But I'll tell you why. Because they find out ways like yeah. Dallas, Texas, that that's as blue as any other city. It's as blue as Chicago. Dallas, Utah. Texas. Yeah. But all the money in the GOP comes from Dallas, Texas. You go figure that out. Everybody flies into this city to raise capital if you run for any office right. in this country in the GOP. But the city is blue because they figure out how to make money through a blue city. They understand how to play the system and play the game. Dan is allowed to stay in place in, in Houston. He's allowed to stay there because those... The power players figure it out. They have it both ways. And the jig is up. The time is coming for these guys who fund the GOP, but then don't vote, don't show up at the county commission and hold Clay Jenkins accountable in Dallas, Texas, right? The worst. The jig is up. We're in a different season here. They're going to be called out. Their names are going to be named. Look, let it happen. I'm saying God purify this thing. It's the year of reformation. Swoop through this nation and and... And kick the rocks over. Let the cockroaches run. I love that. I, I, it's time. Yeah. It's time. Well, Claire, are you this side or that side? This middle of the road thing of the fund, but don't vote. Don't speak out publicly. But you're really the money behind it because you're buying favor. Those right. days are gone. Well, going back to um, to Kamala really quickly, I, I, I just vividly have this um, recollection of... The old show that we did, The News and White Matters, on the old set, okay, so many, many years ago, this was like before, I guess it was before 20, I can't remember when it was. Is but that we were Alex t- Stein's set now? No, no, no. 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 <laughs> no. Even no. further. Um, and so um, we were, t- I was talking with Glenn 
and uh, Stu and the guys about Kamala. And they said, I, it was when she was going to run for, are, is she going to run for president or not? Yeah. And they said, I just think she is a really formidable force. She, I think that she strikes the average American as very genuine. And mm. I just think that she could be really dangerous. And I was like, I don't know what you guys are smoking. Yeah. I totally disagree. I think she comes off as completely disingenuous. I don't think that she is going to be, uh, you know, I don't think that black Americans are going to feel some type of a way about her just because of the color of her. Like, I don't think that that's any of that is going to happen. And so it is kind of nice to watch that all come to fruition. Yeah, because, for sure. Yeah. I, I like so turned off. Sorry by to her. Interrupt, oh, that's okay, go ahead. I, I like the fact that I saw a quote from the Trump fans campaign that said, no matter who, no matter who the elected individual is, we're going to run, we're going to take him. Because we can't just go Kamala, 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 and then the, 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 the convention happens and yeah, it's You waste time. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Waste play time, above waste them, capital. play past them. Let, let's not react again. Right. Sure. We are now in a driver's seat for once. For once. Very, very seldom. And how long we does that We control the narrative. right. right. Take the reins and do not ever let go. I mean, I'm talking 16, 24, forever years. We have the reins now. We control the narrative. They're on their heels. Keep them on their heels. And, and, and don't, don't now just have a Kamala campaign. Go, we are here to destroy evil. Mm -hmm. But then how does it look if Joe Biden comes out and endorses and then they take it away from him? And he's the incumbent. I mean, I love what you're saying. The you idea think that they respect Joe Biden. Well, but the, the general <laughs> they public. They just railroaded him with a coup. No, no. That was a coup. 100%. That but was a Central African Joseph Kabila coup, oh, it was, literally. It, yeah. But it's about perspective. It's about optics, right? Going back to what you said, can they make Kamala look relatable? I have One of my best friends is a doctor in Chicago. He's a brilliant guy, but he doesn't pay attention to the news like we do. Mm -hmm. And he said to me recently, he's like, you know, I was really surprised when Joe got dementia. I was like, dude, it happened in 2019. <laughs> yeah. So if they can trick educated right. people into thinking that Joe's brain isn't broken, do you think they can't make people think Kamala's relatable with uh, cheap fake video editing as you they You may not like when I say this, but this is just, I mean, I'll say it's fact, but you just proof sure. will be in a Okay, pudding. yeah. Scripture tells us that a man can be deceived, which means I can deceive you, you can deceive me, or you can be under a spirit of deception. Mm -hmm. That veil is so thick that people literally, they, are, they, they drank the Kool-Aid and then some whether you could literally show them something that in front of their eyes and they go, I don't see blue. I'm like, it's blue. Yeah, this mm. is I a see, banana, uh, right. This is yeah. a banana. Yeah. Yeah, I see an orange, right? It, it, you can literally, and that's, not, that's akin to how predators indoctrinate trafficking victims and how th they can't see straight. So yeah, you've got a whole class, but it's generational. That's my concern about the Obamas. All the work that's been done through Brexit and through all the work that's been done to say, look, you've been fleeced, black America. They fleeced you. They lied to you. You don't have to have big daddy government. In a second, there's a reflux back when Barack comes back and say, we're for you. We're going to take care of you. There's a natural, unholy correction that happens generation in families where they just, they could come back. It's dangerous. I'm just letting you know, we should pray that it's not Michelle, that it is cackling Kamala. Gavin is dangerous, but I hope it's Kamala. But don't you think that Michelle Absolutely. would rather be a rich Hollywood celebrity? That's what I, I think, too. I do. Because that's so much easier. Make tens of millions of dollars a year from Netflix, do 20 minutes of podcasting, get every red carpet, sure. or be hated by half the country all the time, constantly. Right now, she's Oprah. What happens if she goes back to being in politics? I don't think she'd like it. But she that's what we're telling you, it. Michelle, okay? <laughs> that's what we're trying to tell you. You would hate that job. Don't Vinia. do it. Go to Please. Martha's Vineyard. Throw super spreader parties. Your life is <laughs> awesome. Don't leave it. Don't even think about leaving it. Yeah. Don't listen to Barack. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Okay, listen to me. Yeah, oh, yes. I'm just looking out for Barack. you. <laughs> I'm just looking out for you. All right, we got to take a quick break. We'll be right back. <laughs> So last night was the big Joe Biden speech, you know, Biden or someone who vaguely resembled Joe Biden, do with that what you will, uh, delivered an 11 minute speech from the Oval Office. He was seated at the desk. Of course, it was not the typical I'm going to come up and take questions afterwards or anything like that. And uh, I think it was supposed to explain his exit from the campaign, but I don't 
really think that that's what he actually ended up doing. Uh, instead, I heard a lot of just padding his resume with just abject lies. Um, let's listen to uh, some of uh, Joe Biden on the war. I'm the first president of this century to report to the American people that the United States is not at war anywhere in the world. I'm sorry. Uh, that's news to me. Is that news to you guys? Can we get the $175 billion that we've sent to Ukraine back? We're at war. We're funding it. Can we, right, like, can we get f funding both sides of every war, it seems? Yeah, Yemen, Israel, Syria. Uh, apparently there's one that's about to pop off down in Guyana between them and Venezuela. Great. And they're training the warships for that yep. right now off yep. the coast of Pensacola, Florida. I know that because my buddy has a house there and he says he sees them every day. Wow. That's not even in the news. But, but this is also wow. the guy that gives his son money for crack and say, I'm not funding crack. <laughs> Talking about, right. I'm not pro-drugs. Right. Right. I just give Hunter some cash. Well, they found it in the White House. And remember the? And do you remember when? They, it. Remember when they gave out crack smoking kits? And yes. Then they, <laughs> and then they were like, "No, we're not." And then, like a year later, they were like, "Well, okay, we did. Right, we fine. did do that. Crack All right, you kit. caught us. Okay, fine." <laughs> um, so let's let's listen to uh, let's go through a few more of these lies here. So here's another one. Um, the border is secure. Did you guys know this? No. Joe Biden tough on the border. Apparently, watch. When you elected me to this office, I promised to always level with you. To tell you the truth, we're also securing our border. Oh. Mm. Border crossings are lower today than when the previous administration left office. Lie. <laughs> it's, so, it's so bizarre. And by the way, do you guys notice something else? If it wasn't for the fact that he struggled so much with the teleprompter, when you watch that, there's something very unnatural about him. Didn't it almost seem like AI? I mean, if it was AI, they did a great job because they had him flub with the teleprompter. But <laughs> boy, there's, right when it starts, you're like, is this even real? Yeah, it, I mean, yeah. it is very curious that they wouldn't just do it. I'd in love a to just load him, let, let, them, let them drive him down in the beast in his presidential motorcade, come with me and let him stand there when literally his people take a grinder in front of my eyes Texas Border Patrol come, weld the gate shut. We're welding it shut. Okay? 25 minutes, maybe 23. Border Patrol come, grind the gate open. Open it and weld it open. Right. <laughs> okay? Right. This is the biggest joke. On, I mean, it is, it, is, it is such blatant lies to the American people that we've become, we've been lied to so much that we're now so gullible yeah. that the American people just go, well, the president said it. Well, here's how here's how they were able to um, manipulate some of the data here. So um, according to the latest statistics from CBP, Customs and Border Patrol, we are currently right now at this very moment experiencing a little bit of a dip. I would argue because they're already all here. Yeah. There's no more of them to come over because they're already here. But they said apprehensions in Texas decreased roughly 32% uh, in June. And it is the fewest monthly apprehensions since January 2021 when Biden took office again because they've already made their way into this country. But I do want to show uh, this WAPO Biden versus Trump border crossing graphic. It kind of gives you uh, the full picture here, okay? Uh, the average border crossings under Joe Biden quadrupled <laughs> compared to Donald Trump. Biden is at 2 million, while and Trump was at 500,000. And that's from, the, that's what I'm saying. And that's from accurate. the Washington Post. So that, that do you comes trust from the accuracy? Mallorcas, another liar, Mallorcas. Look, 20 million have crossed into this country. Hear me today. When you talk to guys on the ground, we're close to 20 million have crossed into this country. And remember, it's July in mm -hmm. Texas. Right. Yeah, it's the right. hardest time to cross. It's 103 degrees down there. And literally, yeah. let's talk about the carcasses that the sheriffs are picking up. Yeah. Because once you cross the border, you're 300 miles from a city or water, right? they dying in the desert. Mm -hmm. It's July. So obviously, it dips. Every July, it dips. Yeah. Look, at this point, if nobody crosses the border ever again under Joe Biden, 20 million have crossed, buddy. Right. You have fundamentally changed the face of this nation. You yeah. and your border czar. And that was the goal. Yes. Right. As a Texas media personality and journalist, yeah. I talk to people down at the border. I have a friend with a yeah. team of journalists that work at the border. They, they get us connected to ICE and Border Patrol. And one of the things, one of the whispers, the things people are saying right now that, that's pretty much widely known among people that work in those systems is that when it comes to election time, which we're in right now, 
the Biden administration could call their friends in Mexico and slow it 100%. down. Now, now that doesn't mean they could stop it, but no, they could. But so they, so when they tell you, it. when they're like, well, look at the border this month, it's slowed down a little right. bit. Yeah, maybe a little bit, but they're still finding prayer rugs. They're still finding Chinese nationals. The latest is they just got this guy in America today, uh, this week, who apparently was supplying from China, who was supplying fentanyl to the cartels operating in the United States. Now, how did he get here? It's not a coincidence that he's in the country right now. The CCP sent him here. A hundred percent. The cartel network is throughout this country. It is, it is from, from El Paso to Maine. It right. is so integrated. It is so sophisticated. We've tracked it from moving children to moving fentanyl products. On. You can move anything into this country at this moment. I mean, right. it's, it's this area of this country Americans have never seen. When you go to Hotspur County, Texas, and you stand there, and I, I'll show you video footage. We're going to release a border documentary that we've shot. And we're standing, and the cartel has got five cameras looking at us mm -hmm. on a roof with satellite dishes and spotters with, with AK-47s. And we're standing here, and there hasn't been Border Patrol in seven years because you're in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Rio Grande is three feet wide, 12 inches deep. You could drive a Mack truck into the country with a bioweapon, and no one would know. The border is 1,254 miles right. of Texas alone. Right. That's just Texas. Yeah. It, it's it's, it's mind-blowing when we say border that this president has never seen in his life what we're actually talking about. Right? Yeah. It's, and, yeah. it's, and meanwhile, the cartels got more security than a Trump rally. I mean, they're not right. struggling at all over there. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty scary. And apparently now trafficking humans, and you could probably wax intellectual on this better than me, it's more profitable than drug trafficking. Uh -huh. That's, uh, that's mm -hmm. sickening. Uh, yeah. uh, infinitely more. Tra it's been more profitable. You sell a pound of cocaine one time. You s on you sell a human over and over. 12, and 12 times a day on average. Ugh. Which is, of course, you know, why the there was also a spike in unaccompanied minors um, crossing the border, quadrupled. Labor trafficking in this country. Joe Look Biden at McDonald's is employing 200 kids in a single, you know, th McDonald's franchise with six stores. Labor trafficking is through the roof. The, the human rights violations under this president and Kamala and Buttigieg yeah. and, and, and Mayorkas, these guys should be in front of international tribunals the second Trump takes office. Throw Fauci in there, too all the deaths on his hand and and try them on human rights violations 100 so let me give you another claim of joe biden's uh which is i don't know if you guys realize things are going great <laughs> here in this country oh. i mean the economy's great everything's going great <laughs> you didn't a lot know of news. this yeah, let me just let me just break it to you guy actually i'm gonna let joe biden break it to you on how things are going here uh financially watch oh, good wages are up inflation continues to come down the racial wealth gap is the lowest it's been in 20 years because we're all poor. Yeah. It's because we're all poor. I want to show you guys data. From, again, this is from his ally, the Washington Post. Uh, average inflation under Trump, they padded at 7.8, Biden 19.2%. Unbelievable. This is the one lie Biden can't get away with because yeah. not everybody's at, at the, the border. Pump. Yeah. Not everybody's in California. Not everybody's at the border. Not everybody's in Ukraine. Only Sean Penn and mm -hmm. Angelina Jolie can go there. But we all buy hamburgers. We're all seeing it. We all buy gasoline. Mm -hmm. And average people aren't, that's not going to float with working class, middle class, flyover state Americans no. because they're, do you see this video the other day? This kid posted, he used the Walmart app. He posted it on TikTok. I saw it on Twitter I several days. He used the Walmart app. And he ordered the same thing he ordered three years ago. Did yeah. you see this? Yeah. And it was twice as expensive. It was his groceries for the week. And normally I spent a hundred bucks. Now it's 300 bucks or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. You can't lie to people about no, that. No, no, it's evident. I hope, my hope is the history of Americans is that these things don't stick. Mm. The day before the election, they forget and they don't show up, right? And, and go vote day of in person, not this paper ballot nonsense. Get yourself uncomfortable, drive all your buddies, become an Uber driver that day and drive all your buddies to the polls and show up for the love of a nation, please. Mm. May we not forget that gas pump, $4 a gallon, four twenty-five a gallon, okay? Chicago's safe, so. but they shoot each other up like crazy. Well, right. Tell me what you guys think of this. Uh, we're not playing by the rules they're playing by. I mean, ballot harvesting, right. and we don't do that stuff. Is that is that because we go we're moral high ground? Well, but we're losing. Exactly. Sh should we do it? Yeah. I mean, yes. they do it in California. Yes. It's legal here in Texas. It's not. Right. So okay, hey guys, we're not going to ballot harvest. Okay, you lose. Mm -hmm. Is it worth it? 
I mean, I think that you're never going to win a game uh, that you are playing against an opponent who does not play by the same set of rules. Right. If they're not playing by the rules and you're playing by the rules every single time, you're going to lose. So if you like losing, I guess keep playing by the rules. That's all that I'll say about or that. Or if you're playing by the old rules. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. All right. We got, we've got more to come, but we got to take another quick break. We'll be right back. So let's talk about some updates with the uh, Donald Trump assassination attempt. It's just, again, every single time we talk about it, it just becomes more strange to me. And there are more questions that I have once I hear more information come out. So Pennsylvania State Police Commissioner uh, Colonel Christopher Paris, I would say perhaps blew up that there was a lone shooter narrative at the uh, House Committee on Homeland Security earlier this week. Here's what he had to say. Your testimony, sir, is that approximately 25 minutes, and won't hold you to the exacts, uh, but approximately 25 minutes before the first shots were fired, that local law enforcement officers identified crooks as suspicious? As suspicious, yes, sir. And, and what was it that led those officers mm. to conclude that crooks was suspicious? My understanding was that he was uh, milling about and he stood out to them because he never made his way uh, to a point of, of ingress to the venue <laughs> in defense of... Possible hypotheses could have been waiting for somebody, could have been delayed, uh, but he stood out to them and they, um, from their vantage point at the AGR building, identified him as suspicious. That and was 62 minutes prior, as I understand the timeline, uh, that first one, it was 25 minutes prior for the range finder. Thank you, Chairman. And, and, and right. Commissioner, with respect to him being suspicious, were there other folks who were also in the crowd identified as suspicious by law enforcement? I have been briefed that, yes, there were multiple individuals, uh, which would be consistent with uh, normal operations for a detail like this that are identified as suspicious. Can we take that as a single digit number of other folks? Uh, the number that I was briefed on was single digit, but I can't say definitively that, that I was. What number on. were you briefed on, Colonel? Excuse me. What number were you briefed on? Uh, I believe I was briefed on an additional uh, three individuals. Okay, so Crooks mm. plus three. Three. Three other people at the rally who were tagged by police as suspicious. And I'm just wondering why we haven't seen anything about that. Are, they, are there photographs? Did they take pictures of them? Shall we see them? Is there an investigation going on into these people to see if they are all connected? Um, there was also, remember, there was a mystery man in the gray suit mm -hmm. that Ron Johnson was talking about um, that officials were like, well, yeah, there was a guy in a gray suit that said that he was, what, with the ATF, he texted pictures of the dead body to this, he said, do we text that to me? And then went dark. And yeah. nobody, nobody can tell us who he, who he is. Who is he? We don't know. Why would the ATF be there already? We don't know. You can't blame we conspiracy don't know. theorists for going nuts on this. Nobody yeah. is this bad at their job. The, the narrative about, well, DEI caused this. Yeah, DEI is pretty bad, but this is even worse than DEI. Yeah. This kid was flying a drone around yeah. for two hours. Yeah. You're t isn't there supposed to be a, a federal ruling? No, nothing in the airspace during the event. Nope, a 20-year-old can have a drone. W what was suspicious about him? Maybe the fact that he had a ladder and a gun and he was alone for hours. A range finder? Right. What do you need to, are, are you going to, you're going to practice your golf swing in the middle of a Trump rally? Yeah, like, why else do you need a range finder? <laughs> Look, I we've mean, got, we've got these video surfacing of the tower, the water tower. You've got so many things. You've got the lookout point of the office that looks straight out on the roof. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got, you've got secret service underneath the shooter. You've got them apprehending him, seeing him twice, three, four times. Look, I, I, the second this happened, just military background and what I know, there's never one shooter. It, never. It, I've There's heard that never too. Never one shooter ever, ever in any protocol. We had two shooters side by side on the roof because you never have one shooter. I mean, mm -hmm. And so it, I firmly believe there's a second shooter. I actually firmly believe there's probably a second shooter that fired shots. This was allowed to happen. According to me, my book, I'm not speaking for Sarah on the network, this was allowed to to happen. Yeah, I well, I'll speak for me. Way. This was allowed to happen. How could that it was not? no. These are federal agents. You guys right. remember what happened with the Michigan governor? They staged yeah. a fake kidnapping. Yeah. We we were told they, they they kept security away from the Capitol on January 6th. I mean, did they want this to get bad? It certainly seems that way. Well, here's so just to add more fuel to that fire, you mentioned that uh, Crooks had a drone. 
Um, well, Josh Hawley just tweeted out earlier today that a whistleblower apparently gave him intel that local law enforcement offered drones to the Secret Service before the rally and Secret Service declined. Huh. Yeah. These drones had the ability, they said, to to not only spot people, but also neutralize any any sort of uh, threat. Other and they said, nope, never mind. But you know what they yeah. did do? They did ask for their drone assistance afterwards to surveil the the site. Now, now, That's when they asked well, for it. Because now we need to see. Earlier we didn't. Now we need to show them. Well, and remember, and right. remember, and remember, um, they declined it. Why? Because they had their own drone. Oh, no, wait. We haven't been told that they used any drones. In fact, they mm -hmm. that they didn't. They yeah, did they not didn't use any. drones and they declined assistance with drones. I can go right now and buy like a $30 freaking drone off of Amazon and right. we spend how much money on this particular agency within the federal government and you mean to tell me they can't come up with one single drone? Remember they told us they didn't have enough resources to give Trump more Secret Service a week Wait. and a half prior, but they but the argument came up, right? With Cheadle that they sent more Secret Service to Melania than they did to Trump. Look, a question I want to ask is CNN does not stream Trump's rallies, but they streamed this one. Is it? I've heard that too. Okay. Is it because there's CNN nothing else going on on no, a Saturday? You no, don't no, think no, so? no. I, I'm telling you, I do not hold this over on this go so deep. They wanted America to see All the way to network yeah. president, net, presidents of TV networks that they wanted America to see this, to bring fear into this nation. CNN doesn't stream his rallies, but they stream this well, rally. Well, they didn't stream Amy Coney Barrett swearing in. But to your point, do you remember when Roger Stone got arrested? How is there a CNN reporter out there at five in the morning? Because yeah. they know yeah. they tipped off. That is, and, that's a, that, I'd forgotten about that. And yeah. unsung heroes in this, by the way. Let's tip our hats to the beer swilling MAGA guys who were just out for a good time. Point, yeah. there's a guy on the roof yeah. with a gun. Is there's a guy up? No, there's a guy up there. <laughs> I know. If it wasn't for them, right. could this have been worse? Yes. Well, well what I want to ask next time is instead of saying there's a guy on the roof and I'm thankful for that, get on the roof. Yeah. Yeah. Take well, him. But this whole well, fear a of a slightly sloped roof. Yeah, and it was very over. hot. It was a hot, slopey roof. So, you know, ever, no one can get no, up. But on again, a hot again, this comes <laughs> okay. all the way from look, it, it, it snowballs, right? It comes from you can rob a store and no one can do anything. You can steal $930 and you can't stop a guy. If you stop a guy, you go to jail. So, all we do now is saying there's a suspicion versus right. stepping in and neutralizing the situation as a citizen. You yeah, guys yeah. do a lot of speaking. Last word, real quick. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. We got to take a break. Yeah, we'll go be back. <laughs> I am so glad that you're here today, Kenny, being from Chicago. I want to play for you what uh, Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson said during a, um, a teachers union convention. Watch. What's up, AMT? How y'all doing? Yes, yes. I can hear a little alcohol in the air. I'm going to just I believe it feels like eighth period on the last day of school in here. It's just. Working on that uh, in your union contracts, so you don't got to sneak it out of your desk. <laughs> oh, ha, 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 joking about public teachers being drunk while they're educating and not educating, as it turns out, students. Ha, 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 that's so funny. Saying the quiet parts loud. Yeah. Homeschool your children. Yep. Back during the pandemic, we found out the teachers union president in Chicago was making something like 250 k a year. But not to get off topic, does anybody else think it's interesting? Brandon Johnson's the only black guy on earth with a faux hawk. What is up with that? <laughs> That's what you... <laughs> I can't look at him and not think of I Trey come Donner. to you for the, Chicago, DJ. for the Chicago <laughs> expertise. I come to you for the Chicago expertise and you give me... Faux hawk. <laughs> well, faux look hawk. at it. I mean, come on. In Chicago... It might the just be an unfortunate hairline. Is, it, is that it? I don't okay, know. Fair enough. Yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, but the point of this is... We got like 10 seconds, guys. The point of this is homeschool your children. Yes. Yes. How, right how much more can Please. I show you to convince you? Please homeschool your children. Cool choice. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for having us.